amazing. That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. We're going to pray, Jesse. Am I do what? Going to pray. What? Pray. Oh, am I going to pray? You mean before the show starts? Yeah. Already did. Good. Yeah, I stay in prayer. Good. Uh, you need to pray? No. Oh, if okay. you're prayed, we've got it covered. Yeah. Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Help us fight censorship by hitting the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Ring my bell. I absolutely appreciate it. Today I'm talking with Ray Comfort and he is the founder and CEO of Living Waters Ministries and the best-selling author of more than 80 books. Ray, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Jesse. And so do you want me to call you Reverend Ray or just Ray? Holiness would work really well. Holiness, Ray. Yes, no, right. just call me Ray. So you are a Jew who believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. My How mother was Jewish, and so I naturally am Jewish, but right. I wasn't brought up with anything. She married a Gentile, and so uh, I was given no religious instruction whatsoever. So your father was an atheist? No, he's Gentile. What's a Gentile? It's a non-Jew. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, Gentile mean non-Jew. Yes. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And how did you come to believe in Jesus as a Jew? You'd like my testimony. Yes. Well, brought up in a non-Christian home, but at the age of 20, I was a very successful uh, young businessman. I had my own business, my own house, lovely wife, everything material I could want. We'd made one child at that time. But I realized I was part of the ultimate statistic, 10 out of 10 die. So I was happy as a non-Christian, this big happiness bubble, but I realized the sharp pin of reality was going to prick it one day. I could lose my wife through death. I could die. My mum and dad were going to die. My dog was going to die. Grandma had already died. And it didn't make sense. And I remember thinking, life is like a holding cell. We're waiting to be executed. We've got a nice blue roof, except in Los Angeles, we have round around the edges. We've got good lighting, good air conditioning. But this life is a holding cell, and we're waiting to die. And so I remember thinking, I'm like in a line and people up the front are stepping off a thousand foot cliff and I'm asking myself, is there any way to get out of this line? And so I, uh, I looked into science and science were too busy putting a man up on the moon to worry about what was going on on earth. Looked in the medical profession, they had no answer to this thing called death. I remember visiting a doctor once because uh, I wanted to extend my precious life, make sure I lived healthily. And I walked in and he was smoking a cigarette, looking like death warmed up, and he was dead a few years later. So I became kind of like Solomon, disillusioned about life, happy though I was, vanity, vanity. How old were you at the time? I was about 20, 21, okay. 22. Okay. And one night I remember my wife had gone to sleep and I just sat on the end of the bed, looked at her and thought, if she died with all my happiness, I'd have nothing to live for. And I remember tears pouring down my cheeks as I just cried out, why? What is the point of this exercise of life? Spinning around on a ball through space, what's the purpose? What, what's the reason for death? And I never realized that God heard my prayer. Six months later, I was on a surfing trip. A young Christian was on the trip. He had a Bible. I read in his Bible the words of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. And I thought, if there's a heaven, I'll probably make it there because I haven't committed adultery. But then I saw the words of Jesus, but I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. And it was like an arrow whoop, hit my chest. I thought, man, I'm a dead man on judgment day because I violated that commandment. And it was then that I understood the cross. You're not gonna understand a cure unless you first admit you've got the disease. And I didn't understand the gospel until I understood I had the disease, the terminal disease of sin. And so I embraced the Savior, became a Christian, brand new person, uh, new heart, new desires. Everybody I met, I shared the gospel with them, gave out gospel tracts, purchased a printing press, put it in our home, printed gospel tracts, put a billboard on the front of our house, uh, which uh, had Bible verses on it. Had, Were you yes, rejected by the Jews once you accepted Christ? Well, my mom wasn't a very religious Jew. Um, she was pretty tolerant. Um, but no, I didn't have the persecution that you'd, you'd imagine uh, like a New York Jew. 
My mom didn't even know who Moses was. That's uh. how <laughs> un-Jewish she was. So she was just Jewish in namesake. Yeah, oh, yeah, see. and uh, a, probably a, what we call a secular Jew. I saw on the video and, and you know, prepare for the show that you are also a street preacher, right? I call myself an open-air preacher because... Open-air preacher, yeah. Yeah, there's a difference. I, I'm not standing on the edge of a street with a bullhorn yelling at people going past and right. holding up signs. We gather a crowd and let them be there of their own volition, by their own free will, and they stand and listen to the gospel. And we do it every Saturday at Huntington Beach, have done for about 12 years. And you have a location where people can come to you as well, like a building where you reach in? Yes, we've got television studios. Uh, we've got a television studio and a film studio in Bellflower in California, and that's where our ministry is, where we, uh, oh, okay. where we send out gospel tracts and books. and. What's the purpose of going out on the street at, down in, uh, at the beach there? Well, for the same reason when you go fishing, you don't stay home because the fish aren't going to come to visit your house. You have to go out and seek out the fish. And so when you're a fisher of men, you go to where the fish are, and we go to Huntington Beach where unsaved people gather, and we gather them and uh, put out a bait and hook them in for eternal life. Who do you belong to, the devil or God? Neither. Yes, you do. You belong to Satan. No, I don't. The Bible says this. The God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not. Satan has access to your mind if you're not trusting in Jesus Christ. So, Patrick, do you think you're a good person? Somewhat. Okay. I guess I have stolen, I've cheated, I've lied. So you're a liar? Yes, and I have lied. Yes, I have. So how could you think you're a good person if you're a lying thief? <laughs> Why not? Because that shows... Have you never stolen your life? Are you I've a good person? I've broken all the commandments, Okay, Patrick. thank you. If you believe God exists and he's good, there must be a place called hell for Adolf Hitler. There's got to be. There must be retribution. There must be justice. The it's going to be one good. big party down there, I bet you. There's no pleasure in hell, Patrick. <laughs> I noticed that there are several around the country there are what called street, uh, street preachers. Uh, is that in the Bible or just made up by man? It's in the Bible. Jesus. They uh, have street preachers? Yes, Jesus preached in the open air. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, a sermon on the mount. He stood on a mountain. He went around, yeah. And people came around. And day of Pentecost, it was open air. And right through the book of Acts, they stood up in the open air. The disciples didn't stay in the upper room and carpet it out and put right. in air conditioning. Yeah. God had granted everlasting life to humanity. And they said, we cannot but speak that which was seen and heard. So when you've got everlasting life, you cannot keep it quiet. You're like a doctor with a cure to cancer. And so if your love is deep enough, you'll move from your family to neighborhood, to friends, and even to strangers because you care about where they spend eternity. Do you, um, have you been attacked personally by being out there? Yeah, I got beaten up in, uh, in Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica by a woman. She which attacked is you physically? Yeah, but it was my fault. Did you push her down? No. Why not? Well, uh, it was my fault. Let me tell you How what happened. How was your fault? Well, there was a crowd of about 40 or 50 people, and this woman called out uh, using the F-bomb two or three times. And I said, Madam, can you watch your language? There are ladies present. <laughs> and she said, I'm a lady. I said, Madam, you may be a woman, but you're not a lady. And at that, she ran at me like a bat out of heaven, and she started beating me up. A bat out of hell? No, a bat out of heaven. No, and, bats don't live in hell. Yeah, but I don't like to use the word hell like that. Anyway, oh. she was like Mike Tyson's sister. If you could imagine <laughs> Mike Tyson's sister, she wasn't pulling my hair and scratching my eyes out. She was going, <laughs> Uh, she got six punches in before my team pulled her off. And then they let her go because she said, let me get my handbag. And she got on a kidney punch. It took two weeks for the bruising to go. But I got up and preached afterwards and the crowd doubled. So she can come back any time because she got my crowd bigger <laughs> for me. Why didn't you defend yourself against her? Um, because I'm a Christian and the Bible says turn the other cheek. And well, I didn't mean the real cheek. What? Yes, the real cheek. didn't mean the physical cheek. Yeah, yeah. I, if someone hits me, I just take it. Are you look, serious? Yeah, well, look at my body. What so, am I going to do to them? Bite them on the <laughs> knee? <laughs> so when your wife beats you up, you just let her beat you? My, we, my wife beats me up every morning. She gets up at 5 o'clock. I stay in bed till 6 o'clock. <laughs> How about when she's physical with you? You let her beat you? That's too private to talk about. We are physical. We love each other. But no, she doesn't beat me up. <laughs> she doesn't? No. I've got to ask you this. Uh, do you sin as a Christian? Do you sin? Yeah, but not willfully. What do you mean, not willful? Well, my desire is to live in righteousness. I don't want to play the hypocrite. So if I get up in the morning and I plan to sin, then that is very wicked. But if I fall into sin, that's different. If I'm driving along and I look at a billboard and have an inappropriate thought, I say, Lord, 
Lord, please forgive me because if I look with lust, I commit adultery in my heart. So I'm tempted to sin every day. Do you lust after every thought, after every post that you see with a woman? No, no. But why did you have to say, were you, was that your own thought when you saw the poster and you looked and saw it? Was that you looking or something else driving you to look? Well, it could be both, but the Bible says every man is drawn away by his own lusts. You so know. you lust after it? No, no, I don't. Well, what were you apologizing for? Then? Temptation. I'm tempted in every way to sin every day. And Jesus who tempt was, you? Well, the devil's a tempter, but so I got. So why are you apologizing for the devil's temptation? Well, it's not his fault; it's mine. How is it your fault? Because if I if I yield to sin, then I'm playing the hypocrite. But you didn't yield. You no, I didn't. Yield. So that was good news. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Oh, yes, very much so. And what do you mean? Will you, what, what is the falling state? Well, I believe the Jeremiah when it says the heart is de, uh, deceitfully or desperately wicked. You, you wouldn't leave your wallet on the ground. Someone's going to steal it. Right. You know how sinful humanity is? At the moment, a woman can't walk out at night without fear of being raped. About men can't go out at night without fear of being murdered. There's just such a... Uh, oh, it's 17, 18,000 murders in the right. U.S. at the moment. Yeah, it's bad. And we have all this corruption with civil law still restraining mankind. Could you imagine if the president said, we're going to remove all law from America? No law. No one's going to get punished for rape or murder. Just do what you want. You'll never be punished. No woman could walk down the street. Imagine that if every man could rape or murder anyone he wanted. Just what would happen on the freeways. People get angry in driving on the freeways. Imagine if you could just shoot people. We have wickedness with the restraint of law. If you want to see how bad human nature is, take the law out and let man do his own thing. So we all need but the, God's, but God's the mercy. But sons of God would not rape if they took away the law of the land, Absolutely right? not, because we, we live in the fear of the Lord. Everything we do is in regards to God's so approval. So it was only the children of Satan that would do the raping. Yes. Um, I want to ask you one other thing about sin. God said, if you believe in God and confess your sins, He is justified to forgive you and then cleanse you of all your unrighteousness. So if He is cleansing you of all your unrighteousness because He forgave you for the sin, how is it that you're still able to sin as a son of God? Well, as I said before, we sin without our will. You know, we, we say, when you become a Christian, you have your Garden of Gethsemane experience. You say, not my will, but yours be done. So that's my, my testimony as a Christian. I want to live in God's will. But, but as a best. son of God, yes. aren't you now living in His will instead of Satan's will? Yes, absolutely. So how are you able... How is Satan able to go against God's will now that you're his son? How is he still able to make you sin? Well, he doesn't make me sin. He tempts me I to mean, sin. I mean, how is he still? But you said you had to apologize. What is sin? Transgression of the law, 1 John 3. And what is that? Four. It's a violation of the Ten Commandments. Lying, stealing, committing adultery, hating someone, murdering, lusting, coveting. But the Bible doesn't call those sins. Yeah, 1 John 3, 4. Sin is transgression of the law. And what is transgression of the law? When you violate the law. It's like if you go down the street here where it's a 30 mile an hour speed limit and you go 70, you're transgressing the law. You're violating the law. And if the law catches, you'll be punished. But isn't the law, isn't the, law the transgression of the law is when man or woman play God by judging others and making decisions and trying to do for yourself as though you are a God. And then as a result of that, you're separated from God. And then that's where you start to break the commandments. Because if you're not connected with God, it's impossible to keep the commandment. So would the transgression of God would be uh, playing God? Yes and no. Um you know, the Ten Commandments are likened in the Bible, in the book of James especially, to a mirror. When you and I get up in the morning, we look in the mirror to see what damage has been done during the night. You know, you, when I wake up, my hair's a mess, eyes are puffy, and I, I get a, from the mirror to the water to wash. That's what a mirror does. It shows me myself in right. truth. And the commandments, that perfect law of liberty, when we look into the perfect, perfect law of liberty, the commandments reveal what we are, that we're sinners by nature. And that's what we take to non-Christians. When I speak to a non-Christian, I say, do you think you're a good person? And most people think they are. 
I do what Jesus did in Mark 10, verse 17. Jesus said to this young man, you know the commandments, and he named them. And so I go through the commandments with non-Christians to see if they've sinned against God. How do you explain the Christians who go to church, they know the Bible, they try to do good, and yet they have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior? <laughs> but yet yeah, they're not keeping the commandments. Yeah, Jesus spoke of what's called true and false conversion regularly. But most of them are like that, even yeah. the preachers. Yeah, there are a lot, so let me explain. Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life right. and few the be that find it. And right. then he said this, broad is the path that leads to destruction and many go in that way. So you can have a false conversion. You can name the name of Christ, but don't depart from iniquity. You say you're a Christian, but you're really a pretender. Jesus called them tears among the wheat, foolish virgins among the wise, goats among the sheep, bad fish among the good that are going to be sorted out on the day of judgment. But they believe, they truly believe that they're a Christian, mm -hmm. and, and then they justify not, they justify sinning as a Christian. They say, well, you know, human nature, whatever they say, because all who sin are slaves to sin, right? And so how is it possible to be a Christian and justify sin and after you become a Christian? Well, anyone that thinks they're a Christian and continues in sin has got a false sense of assurance. They're like holding onto a parachute filled with holes, and they need to be challenged to do what the Bible says and examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. You know that Bible verse? Examine right, yourself know and see if you're in the faith. Right. And the way to examine yourself is not to look at your decision card or how big your Bible is or how much you pray or what church you go to. You look for fruit. Remember, Jesus said, by their fruits they right. should be known. Yes. The fruit of righteousness, the fruit of praise, the fruit of thanksgiving, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faith, Can meekness, Can a non-Christian know what morality is? Yes, of course. How? If morality comes from God only, how can a non-Christian know morality? Well, they choose their own standard of morality. We have so people. So it's not who, real morality. Then. No, well, in a sense it is, but it's not God's standard of righteousness. Remember, the Bible says they go about to establish their own righteousness, being ignorant of the righteousness which is of God. You ask anybody, do you think you're a good person? They'll say, Yeah, I'm a good person, because they don't understand that good in God's eyes is moral excellence. The dictionary has over 41 different definitions of the word good. So people can be moral in their own sense. They can, uh, they can be a law unto themselves. So they can't know it. So in other words, unless they've been born again of God, they cannot know what morality is. They're blinded. Their understanding is dark and they're yeah. alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. Yes. Do you discriminate? No. You don't discriminate? Well, in what way are you talking about? Period. Do you discriminate? Yeah, I do. If a man's a, a murderer, I'll discriminate him from a man who's not a murderer. If someone's a thief, I'll just discriminate. I won't invite him into my home if he's violent. So in a sense, I discriminate, but not in racial terms or anything like that. Um, what do you mean racial terms? Well, I don't see skin color. I love everybody. You don't see are. skin color? No, we should What color am I? You're a little darker than me. I'm black at Ace of Space. Yeah, no, you're not. No, I'm black. <laughs> oh, you black. This is black. No, I'm black. You've got a good tan. You turn out the light, you'll see those pants before you see me. <laughs> so, so you do discriminate. No, 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 not racially. Why not racially? Because it's wrong. Why? We should love every person for who they are. I discriminate racially too. <laughs> oh, everything. You do? Yeah. <laughs> Is that, that a wrong? Is it a problem? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're called to love our enemies and do good to those You enemies. love all people? Yes, sir. You love all people? Yes. Your enemy? Yes. Oh, good. I love um, people that beat me up. Is the Word of God in the Bible or in the heart? Well, there's the written Word of God, but the early disciples didn't have a Bible. Thank Most you. of them couldn't read. There was no printing press. The That's Bible right. hadn't been compiled until a number of years. So had the, they had the spoken Word of God. They heard the Gospel, and they had the Word of God in their heart. Yes. And so today, is the Word of God in the Bible, or is it in our hearts? Well, both. We have, we have the blessing of God's Word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Prayer is us talking to God. The Bible is God speaking to us. We know the will of God through His is Word. Is the Bible the Word from God, or is the Bible the Word of God? Both. How can it be both? 
Well, it's from God and it's His Word. I'm giving you my word now. It's coming from me to you. But the, the word you are speaking concerning God is coming from God, right? Not everything I say is from God. So I, I said the words that you are speaking that are coming from God, that's from God in you, right? Yeah, but I check up on it in Scripture. If I say something, make sure it's in the Bible. You know, the so Bereans. you will have to read the Bible to know that, you, yes. that God is speaking through you? Yes and no. What do you mean by that? Well, someone can hear the gospel, and uh, you see, when I, when I share the gospel with an unsaved person, I'm not trying, trying to get them to believe that Noah built an ark, or that Jonah was swallowed by a big fish, or that Balaam's donkey spoke to him, or even believe the book of Genesis. I want them to believe the gospel. Remember, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, because the gospel is the power of God to salvation. So that's what I share with people. And when, when someone believes the gospel, they'll believe the Bible. That's the train that pulls the carriage. Conversion, and then all these things will follow. The Bible is, is just a book of letters that men, some men who were inspired by God wrote about their testimonies, and they put it in the form of a book so that they can point the way back for us to find the Word of God within us. The Word made flesh. But I've noticed that most people have taken the book, the Bible, and made it the Word of God, and they don't realize that the Word of God is written in our hearts. It's been made flesh. And the, and the, and the Bible, the paper Bible is just a road map by, back to that. And so you see a lot of people really into the Bible, and they quote the Bible, and they've been deceived intellectually that it's the Word from God, I mean of God. And so they're really not able to live it. You know, they can't be trusted. They can't be, anytime they can get away with doing wrong, they sneak and do it or whatever they do because they have not discovered the kingdom of heaven within. Have you noticed that? You know, that's the new birth. When someone's born again, that's when God comes to them in Christ, and Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. We're made new creatures in Christ. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. But then, once that happens, the Bible comes alive. If you try and read the Bible without being born again, you're like a man who tries to read a book in the dark. It's not going to make sense. So do you believe the Bible is the word from God or the word of God? Both. But the word of God is in our hearts. Yeah, it's both. Okay. Generation Z, you know what, who, that, who they are? That's the last lot that came through. I'm yes. sorry? That's the last lot that came through Generation 3. They came <laughs> after X. I noticed that Generation Z, the younger kids, don't believe in God. Less and less and less are believing in God. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Do you know how to prove God's existence to them? No. It's very easy to do. How? Well, when someone says to me, I don't believe in God's existence, I say, answer me this. Do you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? And they go like this. I don't believe nothing created everything. There was something. I say, so it just wasn't God? They say, yeah. Well, let's try and find out why you don't want it to be God. And when you take them through the commandments and find they're into fornication and pornography, you realize they don't want it to be God for the same reason a thief doesn't want to be close to a policeman. It's a moral issue, not an intellectual issue. Should we try to prove God existed, or should they find it for themselves? Well, both. But if you prove it to them, then they only believe it because you said it, not because they saw it for themselves. No, everybody believes in God's existence. There's, but there's, I'm saying if you prove it to them, they have not found that and know it for sure for them. Remember the guy in the Bible? Yeah. When Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? And he finally said, he was one of the ones that said, well, you're the son of God. And he said, you are the kind of guy I'm going to build this, this church up on because this is Peter. no one told you that. You saw yes. it for yourself. Yeah. Nowadays, people have to be told. They have to be taught the Bible. They have to be told what to say to accept God. They have to be told everything. And so they only convinced because someone said it, not because they see it themselves. Well, yes and no. My confidence when I share the gospel with someone is that the gospel will convert them, that God will bring a conviction of sin and they'll be drawn to Christ because of God's grace and His mercy. So I'm just planting seed. When I share the gospel with someone, I'm planting seed. I don't make the seed grow. God makes the seed grow. He causes it to become a tree and have fruit. So all I do is I don't try and get decisions from people or talk them into anything. I just share the gospel with them, that they've sinned against God and need a Savior. Do you see anything wrong with the Christian churches today? Yes. And what's wrong with them? A lot of them are pro-abortion. 
pro yeah, homosexual. Yeah, that's one of the things, yeah. A lot of them use blasphemy. There's a lack of fear of God, a reverence for God within yeah. the contemporary church. But God has his church. He knows those that are his. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. And he's going to sort them out on the day of judgment. Did they make a mistake, the Christian churches, did they make a mistake by allowing women to say that they are preachers and that they've been called by God to preach? And so a lot of men are given into that today. Was that a mistake? I'm not sure what you're talking about specifically. You know how a lot of these women talk about saying, oh, I'm a preacher, I'm an evangelist, <laughs> and I'm this and that. Is it a mistake for men to allow women to do that? Well, within the local church, yes. There is an order that God has given within the local church. And what's that order? That men do the teaching. And why are men cowing down to that with the women? Because they're wimps. They're beta males. Yes. Beta! Would you ever let a woman preach in your church? Take over your church and become a preacher like I don't that? have a church. No, I wouldn't. Oh, good. Yeah. Do you know what the order of God is? Tell me. Do you know what it is? Tell me. No, do you tell me that I'll respond? I don't know what you're talking about. So oh, God in Christ, Christ in man, oh, man yes. over woman, a woman over children? Yes. Uh, men don't seem to understand that today. What happened that caused them to forget that order? Because a lot of men are subject to their wives and to other women, and they're letting women teach them. They become little boys when they get married, and the woman become mama, and it's just a mess. They're afraid to speak up to women and tell the truth. What happened that men forgot their role in life? They have forsaken the instruction book. You know, um, when I get an appliance, I've got a weakness in my character. I tend to look at the instruction book and say, the print's too small, there's too many pages, and put it down, and I try and put the appliance together myself. But then something goes wrong, and then I go back and see what I've done wrong. That's a silly thing to do. God has given us the instruction book in the Bible, and it gives us the order for humanity to make things work properly. And that's all we've done. We've forsaken God's word, we've forsaken the instruction book, and we have a mess, not only in families, but right throughout the whole of society. If we'd go back to what the instruction book says, we'll have harmony. You know, a dirty word with the secular world is the word rules. They don't want rules, laws. But in football, we have laws. When we drive on the streets, we have laws. You get harmony in a football game if there are laws. Yeah. If there's no laws, it's just a mess, chaos. On the roads, no laws, just a mess. And in society, no laws, it's a mess. So law brings liberty. The Bible speaks of the perfect law of liberty. And that's what we need to get back to. We need to have the fear of God and a, and a reverence for his commandments and for his will, and then we'd see order in society. Is there a difference between men and women? Yeah, women are more intelligent. More intelligent? Yes. And what's the real difference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a difference between men and women? Yeah. What's different the difference? Shapes. And what else? Um, <laughs> women uh, talk more. They speak twice as much as men. Too because much. Because men huh? are, no, not too much. Men are pretty when slow. When they start talking, don't you, don't you hear this loud? Ah, bum, bum, bum. You want to like shut them down? <laughs> yeah, that's because we can only have one thought at once. Women have got a mind that can take multiple thoughts. That's why so they always talk. Yeah. So and much that it drives the dog crazy. No, you just got to mute. Crazy. You got to mute the, the TV. The paint on the house drops off. No, you got to mute. The, the animals <laughs> die. <laughs> you, you and just, the man go nuts. Yeah. And well, become a drunk. Yeah, but the thing is, what you do is you say, okay, this is a different creature than me. This is a woman. They're different than us, okay? So you mute the TV and listen to your wife. Because if you keep the TV going, you're going to get tension. But every time you listen, you suffer. No, you don't. You, you love your wife as Christ Have you noticed the that church. every time a man listens to the woman, he suffers? Not every time. Every time. No, you mean, you've got to meet my wife. Oh, God. She's wonderful. Oh, God. <laughs> What's wonderful about your wife? Well, she loves me, and she needs a medal for that. She uh, what? Loves me. And she needs a what for that? A medal. What does that mean? That's, uh, she needs to be rewarded for loving me. She's a Why is that? She's a sweet wife. She loves the Lord. She works for a ministry. Is she better than you or something? Yeah, she's, uh, yes. But why better. would you marry a woman who thinks she's better than you? She didn't think she's better than me. I think she's better than me. Why do you think that? But she is. That's but that's why. a put down to a woman <laughs> no, to marry a weaker no, man. It's not. I'm strong. I'm the head well, of the house. Well, how is she better than you? Well, I, I, I love her as Christ loved the church. We'll only esteem our wife as much as we understand the cross. And so we've got a wonderful marriage. We've been married for something like 48 years. How is she better than you, though? Well, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek when I say that. Oh, you know, you're just messing around? Yeah, I'm messing around with you. 
<laughs> uh, What's the, is there another difference between men and women? Yeah, you know, a guy was going to beat me up once um, because I was trying to protect a woman that he had punched and he pulled back his fist to hit me and my wife, who's four foot eleven and a half, yelled out, don't you touch my husband. She was very courageous because she loves me. And so when we talk about the difference between men and women, um, women are made differently than men. They think differently than we do. Women like to talk things out. Men don't. When I have a problem, I go to my cave. I want quiet. I want to just think about. I got a problem. I want to work this out. And you lock her out? Yeah, yeah. You lock the door? No, I don't lock the door. And lock it's not a real cave. It's a mental cave. No, lock the door. No, I don't lock the door on oh. my wife. And, um, She'll come in anyway. No, she... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Have you noticed that? yeah, but women want to talk things out. When they've got a problem, they don't want to go to a cave. They want to talk it out. They don't want, to, they don't want an answer. They just want to talk it out because that's their release. And it's important to understand those differences. That's what makes harmony within a marriage, when men understand the difference between them and women. Um, have you noticed that men are logical and women are illogical? I wouldn't say that. Why not? Well, my wife has made decisions that are very logical that have helped me see things. That's why you think she's better than you. Well, I think she's, she's wonderful. But not better than you. Yeah, not better. We're, we're, we're equal. Equal? You're equal to a woman? Yeah, yeah. So you're like a woman? <laughs> you're trying to wreck my marriage. What are you doing? <laughs> no. So you're like a woman? I'm like a woman? No. Yeah. What well, do you mean you're equal to a woman? Well, we're, we're human beings in God's eyes. You know, the, the Bible says there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female in God's eyes. Do you agree with me that the woman came from the man? Yes. And so if she came from you, how are you equal to her? She has to be equal well, to you. Well, it was Adam that bore the woman, and God created Eve from Adam. Right. Yeah. And so the woman is subject to the man, right? Yeah, but in love. You, you know, it's not like do this wife. It's why, like, why are you thinking that way? Because that's the impression people get when we say words like the woman is subject do to the man. Do you care about the impression people get? Yes. I don't. I do. Why do you do? Because I want to. Because you like your wife. You are equal. Yeah. And because I want to reach them with the gospel. But uh, so you agree that women are illogical and men are logical? I've never said that. No, women are logical. They have a logical mind like men do. My wife gives me wisdom regularly. Sometimes I need her, her opinion. Lots of times, though, as I, we, I made a new film last night and I got my wife to watch it and give her opinion. Because well, that's good because women, they're so negative, they'll see all the bad things in that's the film. That's good, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's good for it that. It is good. She's a good critic and a, I listen to her. A good negative critic. Yeah, good and positive. So let me ask, is it true that God is the man's God and Satan is the woman's God? No, I would never say that. I, you want to get me beaten up by another woman? What are you trying to do? <laughs> you would get beat up for speaking the truth? No, it, I wouldn't say that. The, t t Satan is the woman. No, I wouldn't say that. Then why do women hate men so much? Why there's an enmity between men and women? There's no enmity between me and my wife. We have a lot no, of relationship. Maybe you and your wife have worked it out, but why is there an enmity between men and women if it's not Satan working through her to, be, to try to get her to destroy the Son of God? Why is she doing it if Satan is not influencing her? I don't know. I got out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you read your Bible every day? No. Why not? I don't have time. You don't have time? No. Do you feed your stomach every day? No. You don't eat? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. So let me go back to... No, so I want to ask you a question. Okay. I read the Bible Every day I Why? have done for 40 because it's my sustenance. But I, the, the word of God is in my heart, and I've discovered he brought me back into the kingdom of heaven within, and the word is there. I do study the Bible when I have a chance. Not study it, but I read it and put it down. But the word of God is in me, and I've found that, and so I'm living from that. Now, have you been born again? Yes. Uh, do you think you're a good person, or have you got a wicked heart? I, I don't think of myself as a good person, for sure. So you're a sinner. No, I'm not a sinner. You're not a sinner. I was a sinner up until I repented and was born again. You're a sinner by and nature. So after I was born again, I sin no more. Have you sinned since you were born again? No. Let me ask you this. People that say that often don't realize that sin is failing to love your neighbor as much as you love but yourself. But I love my neighbor. Do you share the gospel with them? Yes, I do. But Good. I don't be going out there preaching the Bible to them, but 
I'd definitely tell them the truth. Well, what's the truth? How would you share the gospel with me? If, if I said to you, excuse me, I'm dying. There's a knife in my back. I've got three minutes to live. How can I enter heaven? I'm scared of going to hell. I've broken the commandments. What can I do to be saved? What would you tell me? Number one, I would tell you not to be scared to go to hell because you have no choice in it anyway. And I would tell you to repent. Of what? Of your ego playing God. What about? You must forgive. Before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must forgive. Otherwise, hell you bound. But I, what say I said to you? I've never played God. I'm an atheist. Don't even think about God. If you're an atheist, you do play God. Okay. You can't help it because atheists don't believe in God. And so they have no other choice but to play God because Satan is their daddy. But I want to ask you this yes. as we move forward. Yes, sir. Um, you're conservative, right? Yes. I read that you're conservative. Did you vote for the Great White Hope? <laughs> That's between me and the Lord. Oh, um, okay. I I'm respect that if you don't uh, yeah, want to. I'm a Christian. Okay. Right? I respect if you don't want to say, yeah. I voted for the Great White Hope. <laughs> yes. I, vote, I love the Great White Hope. You know who the Great White Hope is? Yes. Who? It's uh, who you're talking about, our president. Uh -huh. That's yeah. yeah. You know, what I like about the president is that he is pro-life. That's the issue for me. If someone's a baby killer, they think it's okay to kill babies in the womb. I don't care about their fiscal policy. Right. I care about their moral stance. Do you love the fact that he's all man? He stand up and deal with people, no matter what color they are, no matter if they're male or female. It doesn't matter if it's mama or daddy. I like He's going to deal with you. I like anyone like that. Yeah, it's hard to find men like that, though. Yeah. Men well, are hang afraid on. To, I'm surrounded. Men are afraid to tell the truth to women and about women. They're afraid of the colors. They're afraid of everything. Have you noticed that nowadays? No. I'm yeah. surrounded by men that love God, and they're men's men. They're strong. But they don't tell the truth, though. Yes, they do. I bet you they wouldn't tell the truth about the colors. Yes, they do. Uh, okay, they're bring godly me down men. to ask them. You come and visit our ministry, and I'll, and I'll introduce you to faithful men that love God okay. and that fear God, and they are men's men. Okay. So you are a conservative. What's the difference between a conservative and a liberal? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, all I can say is they vote conservative, they vote liberal. The liberals are usually pro-abortion. Pro Pro everything yeah. that's against what conservatives stand for, but there's a difference between Christian and conservative, and it's important to realize that. Do you support uh, same-sex marriages? No. Is that wrong? Yes, according to the scriptures. And homosexuality is it wrong? According to the scriptures. And what does the scriptures say to say that homosexuality is wrong? This is what it says in First Corinthians, uh, chapter six, verse nine through ten, chapter nine, verse. Uh, anyway, it's in First Corinthians. It says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor thieves, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor the covetous will inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. So if I meet a man who's a, an adulterer, I've got to say, hey, you've got to repent and trust the Savior. You're yeah. not going to enter heaven. If someone's a, a covetous person or a thief, if I love him, I'll tell him the truth. And I'm not going to hold back with homosexuals. I love homosexuals. I talk to them a lot, yeah. and I tell them the truth. Right on. But it's very important to realize that we shouldn't approach them with a condemning, holier-than-thou attitude, but we love them right and, on, and yeah. show a concern for them, and they'll you, listen. Uh, you said something like, if you want to go to heaven, do you believe that children of God can experience heaven on earth? Yes and no. What do you mean yes and no? Well, it depends what you mean by your, que your question. Uh, and what do you mean by yes and no? Well, it depends what you mean by your question. How are we, when you say experience heaven on earth, what do you mean? Uh, can children of God, those who have been born again of God, can they experience heaven on earth? Well, we receive the Holy Spirit. We can have joy unspeakable. We have peace that passes all understanding. We have a living hope in the Savior. So in one sense, yes, but at the same time, we experience hell every day in the sense of suffering all around us. But not for the children of God. Those who have been truly born again, that doesn't happen to them. It only happens to those who have not been truly born again. You mean non-Christians non only get problems? Non-Christians and the Christians who have not been born again. They are catching hell, but if you've truly been born again, you can experience heaven on earth. It is, it is an amazing way to live. Well, you're talking about the peace that passes all understanding. And Not only am I talking there. about that peace, but yes, I am. But I noticed that as a son of God, you can overcome all challenges. Yeah. 
and you don't have to react to them, you overcome them. Yeah, but we still get the same trials that non-Christians get. You Except know. that sons of God overcome them and not succumb to them. Yeah, you think of what Jesus said, whoever hears my sayings and keeps them are likened to a wise man who built his house on rock. And when the rain descended, floods came, winds blew, it didn't fall because it was found on rock. And then he talks about the secular people, those that hear the sayings of Jesus and don't keep them. He says, I like him to a foolish man who built his house on sand. Why and do the children of God... i got to finish this. Oh, okay. And he said, when the rains came and the floods came, it fell and great was the fall of it. It's important to realize both the wise man and the foolish man still receive storms. So we get cancer, we get fears, we get pain, we get suffering, we get... Children of God... Yeah, all of us. Those who've been born again? Yeah, and we'll eventually all, all die. Everyone dies. I get you going to die? Yes. You going to die? Uh, this body's going to leave, but I'm... When I'm, are you going to die? I don't know, but it's pretty soon by the Do you have life insurance? Yes. You have health insurance too? Yes. Put me on there. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on one of your beneficiaries. Uh, my wife. Put me on that too. No, you're not getting what she's getting. She yeah, I say half. No, you're not getting any of it. I'll well, give you, you, I've given this you is a, a sure investment. I've given you an, an in and out card. That's all you're getting today. <laughs> uh, do you believe that racism exists? Oh, yes. But it's not a skin problem. It's a sin problem. And why do you believe racism exists? Did you hear what I said? It's not skin. It's sin. What do you mean by that? Well, you can get blacks living together and you still get disharmony. You get crime in that. You get whites living together, still get crime and terrible corruption. Put them together, the skin sparks off that corruption that's already there. The problem isn't the skin, it's sin. It's yeah. our hearts are selfish. I agree. And you know, It's a spiritual thing. Yeah. Not physical. Yeah, yeah. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of um, white young males who are, they have been so under attack. Do you agree with me that men are the most hated species on this side of heaven? Men are the and most hated species. Now, women are hated just as much as men. No, women are being catered to. <laughs> They're not. You go to an Islamic country and you find... But we're not in Islam, we're in America. Yeah, we are. Have you noticed in America that men are the most hated species on this side of heaven? I don't know. I'm sorry? We've got different worldviews. You haven't noticed that men are under attack? Well, I know it's women are under attack, too. Women are not under attack? Well, not in your part of the country, but you, in my part. Over yeah. in Santa Monica? No, I don't live in Santa Monica. I live in, in Orange Bel County, wherever yes, you're from? Uh, yeah. Women, yeah. women are under attack over there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't attack women, and I don't see women under attack. And I don't women, see are not, women are attacking. They are not under attack. Yeah, yeah. They are falsely accusing men of molestation. Oh, I agree with you. Spousal that, abuse that, and yeah, in one child sense, yeah. abuse and yeah, it all that lying crap. Ruining a man's reputation yeah. with accusations. Yeah, I agree in that respect. Okay. I didn't know where you were coming from. Now I agree. Yeah, there's a lot of women that have got an agenda to take men down. They it's, hate me. And you know why, right? Uh, tell me. He's the son of God. Is that right? And, and, and the girl, the daughter of God, I hate the son of God. Yes. Um, and white men especially are under attack. They are called white supremacists. Yes. They are called um, Hitler folks or whatever they're going to yes. call them, right? What do you think about white men being, a, they're not allowed to defend themselves. They're not allowed to, to say, no, this is not right. Uh, whenever a white guy does something that, whatever, right, they go, they go after them like now they're going north. But if a man of color does the same thing, nothing is said about it. Why do you think white men are under such attack? I think it's all a result of our nation turning its back again, uh, to God. We've turned our backs on God, should I say. And because we've lost the fear of God, people live for their own sinful nature and not God. If someone fears God, you won't accuse other people. You'll love other people. Right. And that's what's happened. That's right. So we've become a godless nation that's lost the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. What are white men to do in this situation? Be loving and kind. Not to hate. No, don't hate. I tell them don't know. hate to speak up, but don't hate. Yeah. Uh, a lot of white men, and I know you're Jewish. You're a Jew, right? Yes. But you're not into the Jew stuff. No. Um, a lot of white men are angry at the Jews because they say that the Jews is helping to destroy America, to destroy our values, to bring in the illegal aliens, to destroy the country. And so they are angry at the Jews for doing those type of things. 
what do you say to those? Is that true or not? I don't think it's true. And you don't think, <clears throat> how about the liberal Jews? Are they helping to destroy America? Well, with, with, if you talk about liberal Jews, let's talk about Hollywood, right. which is, uh, whether it be Jew or Gentile, Hollywood's agenda has been to destroy the world. Is Hollywood mostly liberal Jews? I'm not sure, but let me go back. When they had the Hayes Code in the 1930s, do you know what the Hayes Code was? No. There was a man, a Presbyterian minister, who was, had some authority in Hollywood, and he brought in the Hayes Code, which says you're not allowed to use the name of Jesus, the name of God, have sexually explicit things on screen. So from the mid-30s till the early 50s, we had wholesome movies that had good themes yeah, and had a fear that. of God and, yeah. and, and, and great movies, like even Ben-Hur and movies like that. But then they got rid of the Hayes Code in the early 50s and left it up to... <coughs> Uh, people to put a rating on the movies, which allowed the filth to flow right across the country. Right. Violence and adultery and fornication and blasphemy and homosexuality came from Hollywood like one big sewer throughout the whole so world. So were there liberal Jews helping to push that? Well, I don't know. It's Jew nor Gentile. Um, it's just that uh, human heart is deceitfully wicked. There are some Jews, there are some Gentiles. Oh, okay. So. And so are the white guys justified in what they see? and what they believe that the Jews have done, and they should speak up about it just so they'll be angry so they don't fall into a ditch. Yeah. They should speak up about the wrongdoing of the Jews, right? Yeah, and, and but speak up about the wrongdoing of all humanity. Right. You know? But how about, because a lot of them really are convinced that the Jews are playing a big role in destroying America. Should they speak up about that? No. They shouldn't speak up about no, it? No, that's, and it can be anis, anis, uh, anis, uh, antisepticism. <laughs> <laughs> What's the right word? I don't know. I'm black. Semitism. You're black. No, you're not. You're light brown. Um, <laughs> anti-Semitic. <laughs> anti we, sh we shouldn't, up, we shouldn't speak Jews about... Have done, no, no. Let's we, say some of the Jews have done what they think. Let me finish what I was saying. We shouldn't point people, uh, say they're Jews, they're Gentiles, they're black, they're white. We should go right to the heart and say it's the heart that needs changing. That's for sure. It's the gospel that needs right. to change, whether Jew or Gentile, black or white. And that was the message from Martin Luther King. Where's Martin Luther King now? Uh, God knows. I rest my case. Yes. But what I want to what I want to try to help and get straight. Let's you know how the blacks are always blaming the whites, right? Yes. They always and they say whites and calling them out, right? Whether they're right or wrong about it. Should the white guys have the, the same ability to do the same thing, but just don't hate? They should be able to stick up for themselves. Yeah, but not should hate. be allowed to. The media should let them speak up. Yeah, and don't hate. But why are they shut down when they speak up about what they believe the Jews are doing? Because we've got a liberal media. Oh, okay. Amazing. So I got to put you on the hot seat right now. We run out of time. You haven't been on the hot seat yet? <laughs> <laughs> the hot seat. What I need from you, just quick answers, all right? No. <laughs> is Bruce Jenner a man? Yes. Would uh, Jesus support sanctuary cities for illegal aliens? No, of course not. Is it a good idea to make America great again? Yes. Does God love everyone as they are? Yes and no. I don't know what you mean by yes and no. Well, You've been saying that a lot today. Yeah. It can't be both right and wrong. Yes, the, you can be a qualification. Um, what? Yeah, qualification. You went to college? No. Oh, good. So... Let me just, Jesse, the Bible doesn't say God is so oozing with love that he has no sense of righteousness, justice, or truth. He is a balanced in nature. You it, can't give me an answer. No, not short, with that, that God just loves everyone the same. Because I'll tell you why. Because Scripture says God hates all the workers of iniquity. There, is, there, are some, there are some things that God looks at where he brings in a judicial hatred. It's not a sinful hatred. The Bible says we're to hate evil, and some people are so given over to evil, God withdraws his love for yeah. them. Is uh, CNN fake news? I don't know. Do you, <laughs> wa do you watch it? No. Well, how do you know if it's fake news if you don't watch it? That's why I don't watch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are liberal men beta males? I don't know what you're talking about. A liberal men, beta males. I don't know what that means. You don't know what a beta male no, is? No, you're talking another language. Beta male? No. Me weak. Oh, weak. Yeah, sometimes. How much in reparation should blacks get? I don't know, but I, I you know. Should they get reparation? I don't know. Um, it's okay to say no. 
Yeah, it just depends. That's a blanket statement. No, you know, I, I can I, tell you, no. Okay. Cause I'm I, sick of them begging. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Aren't you sick of the blacks begging? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But you is see, Armageddon look, near? Eh, pretty, pretty close. And when is Armageddon? It's the big battle, the, the final battle in Israel where Russia comes down upon Israel. I went to that location. Yeah. When I went to Israel, I visited that battle location. Yes. And then they have the planes underground. They do? Yeah. But don't tell anybody. Okay, keep it cool. Um, is speeding a sin? Speeding a sin? It's a violation of the law and transgression of your conscience if you speed. Is Over it a the... sin? Yes. Is so-called police brutality a problem in America? Yes and no. There you go again. Well, you see, <laughs> what, what is... A not bruti- supposed to have yes and no No, answer. no. Do you still beat up your mother-in-law? That's a yes or no, no answer. No, because she did. Yeah. yeah. She's dead? Yeah, so I can't beat her anymore. <laughs> can't beat her anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you say police brutality, there are times when the police are brutal and they shouldn't be. I've never seen it. Yeah. Well, what about Rodney King? What about him? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I, they seem to beat him too much. Where's Rodney now? I, he died. I rest my case. You rest your case. <laughs> um... Tell the folks how they can reach you, get you, hear your message, and your YouTube and all that good stuff. Well, we've got a YouTube channel called Living Waters, and it's got, to date, just on 85 million views, and they're completely free, no advertising, so people can go and watch witnessing sessions, very colorful, with atheists and all sorts. And they can go to livingwaters.com and read articles and listen to free audios and see what books we've got and tracks and tapes and all sorts of stuff at livingwaters.com. Okay, what is a man? What is a man? What is a man? As someone who's made in the image of God. What is a woman? Made from man, but made in the image of God. She's made in the image of the man, not God. I don't know, not made in the image of the man. She didn't come from God, she came from man. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a great time, and I want to give you something here, if oh, I may. Million dollars. Your problems are over. Your move. problems are over. My problems are solved. That's the gospel. A million trait. dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you for having coming. Me. I've enjoyed I'm myself. Thank me you. Me too. I have fun. <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Let me hear from you. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, ring my bell. Uh, don't forget the merch. Also, we got to move from this building at the end of this year. So support us financially. And if you know somewhere in the West LA area where we can lease, or you want to donate a bill, let me know about it. I want to hear from you. We need your help, all right? I appreciate it. Next time on The Fallen State. Real men are not progressive men. They are more conservative, logical thinking men. So how did you become an illogical progressive Well, I don't agree with your question. But progressive means you don't know what you want. You're confused about things. You're up and down emotionally and mentally. I don't agree with that statement at all. Oh, you know, that generalization is just as as off and ridiculous as a left-leaning person going, oh, all conservative guys, they're all racist, gun-toting, Jesus freaks. They are. <laughs> All right, we're trying to get a lot of likes on this video. Is that what we're trying to do? No. I'm an art- artist and sensitive. In your definition, that sensitive. means I'm not a real man, yeah, which don't, I don't, don't agree with. Don't let another woman know you're sensitive. Women hate sensitive men. So there's three and a half billion women in the world, and you've just, all of them feel the same way. All of them. They okay. Hate. All because black people are, gang- are gangbangers. Almost. Thank you. I didn't know you. I didn't know you were going to admit to that. I don't agree with that. I'm just calling out your nonsense. This is toxic masculinity. Your definition of a real man. So I need quick answers from you, all right? Well, no, you, no, no. I'm not going to agree to that ahead of time. No, this is already toxic. your 90 percent of your questions are already loaded bullshit that I don't agree with. The fallen state. watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show